before which pathway actually uh, drives the phenotype. And I, I will do that by explaining the infrastructure um, for a functional molecular data sharing that we constructed. So uh, basically, first I have to say why pathways. That's because we are going for a higher level uh, explanation of how molecular, uh, functional molecular activities and relationships work. Uh, and based on pathways, and we can find many of those public, publicly, uh, we attempt to represent in a, a very importantly, in a standardized way, uh, pathway activity, uh, pathway activity correlation in the context of a network, and based on that, uh, pathway disease and drug interactions, if we go a bit further. Uh, so basically, we have a workflow that you can think of uh, generative data sets. Uh, it's composed of three modules, the first of which is called PathPrint. Uh, you, you can see that. It's called PathPrint, and uh, it compares um, gene expression profiles, and it gives you the relative activity of each pathway within this context in something that we call a pathway fingerprint. Uh, the second one, called PCXN, um, uh, you give uh, to that tool uh, a, a a bunch of uh, interesting pathways for your research, and then it gives you, it builds a correlation matrix uh, based on uh, equi expression matrix or a correlation of act activity matrix. And you can either visualize that or just get the raw data of correlation between pathways. Thirdly, we have uh, PDN, which basically uses the same type of networks, but then it enriches them with uh, drug and disease signatures. Uh, it, it's gene signatures, but then uh, you turn that into nodes and you have bigger networks. And you try to extract from those networks prioritized drug lists. So this is our end goal. We start from gene expression and we go to prioritized drug lists if we use all these tools. Uh, but they also work independently. And the first module is PathPrint, which, as I explained, goes from gene expression to fingerprints. Um, so what it does is if you follow the if you follow the diagram, it starts from gene expression, which it then uh, it translates to pathway expression using the gene members of its pathway. And then it compares that to a, a group of, uh, a very large group of uh, arrays, thousands of arrays, um, to get a distribution. And from that, uh, you get the relative activity for each of the pathways in the network. And this is given to you in the form of a te tertiary summary statistic. Therefore, you have, at the end, the pathway fingerprint, which gives you the uh, idea of how pathways are related uh, activity-wise. But if you have to remember one thing about pathprint, it's that uh, ultimately it generates a set of pathway activities. That's what you have to remember. Uh, but why is pathprint useful, though? It's useful because it is a standardized way uh, of measuring uh, path activity, uh, which can be used, for example, in um, characterizing biological samples, uh, if you want like to compare disease and control. A very important point, and uh, this has been worked a lot on, uh, is that it can be applied in uh, every uh, gene expression profile, because it overcomes uh, species, platform, and batch effects. And this is shown in the paper cited here that came along with PathPrint. Um, also, if you think about all, all the things I said above, it's, it's a significant methodological advantage over single study and relative enrichment methods because it's broader than those. <coughs> uh, as a software, uh, we support open source, so it's available in uh, GitHub under the free MIT license. It's on Bioconductor in, uh, in the form of two R packages for data and software. Um, <coughs> and you can also find it in the original Harvard-hosted website uh, that came along with the publication of the paper. Now, uh, PathPrint has been, uh, has been uh, out for, I think, four or five years now and has some very interesting use cases. The first of which is, um, is that it was used by the stem cell commons to actually help in the standardization of how they represent and compare their stem cell systems. Uh, it's also used in the circuits project for the Cure Alzheimer's Fund. Um, and there, I think, it helps on investigating uh, the regulation of genes that are, uh, that are uh, um, associated with uh, Alzheimer's. Thirdly, and the most uh, recent one, uh, is the paper that, that you can see on the screen, which is a, a sepsis mortality paper which uh, attempts to go from pathways to targets for the specific disease. Um, and this is currently under review. Uh, then we go to our next tool called PCXN, or uh, fully named Pathway Co-Expression Network, uh, which also has a website. 
Uh, what you do for that with that is you take a bunch of interesting, uh, scientifically interesting pathways for your own research, and then you implement it the, uh, in this uh, in this tool, and you can explore. You can either explore this uh, static extendable network uh, using one single pathway if you're interested, and get the most correlated neighbors. Uh, a good idea would be, for example, to use your GACA results for that. Uh, or uh, if you want a broader search, you can actually uh, look for an or analyze, as we use the code word, uh, the relationships, the relationships between groups <coughs> of pathways that have been shown to be co uh, that have been shown to be enriched in a specific uh, a specific uh, pathway collection, of course by gene set enrichment. So you can do explore analyzing. Uh, uh, on these relationships online on uh, p6n.org, which would give you nice visualizations in the form of a heat map or a network, which you can, by the way, uh, then import to Cytoscape and uh, keep doing your magic there, or like plain old um, uh, matrices uh, that contain correlation or some metadata. Uh, so you, you can take information in a lot of ways. As with Pathprint, this is also publicly available on GitHub and the bank conductor package is under review at this point. Um, also both software and ready-made data from Pathprint that you can use like, in an instant. Uh, although PCXN is about like I think one year old or even less and the paper is under review that supports PCXN, it's, it has some interesting use cases. Uh, the first one is it collaborates also with Pathprint, our previous tool, in the Cure Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's Fund and it's used uh, really heavily in the work of the uh, QAD circuits consortium. Uh, then uh, it's also have been deployed by the uh, AMPAD consor consortium, which is the uh, I think the Aging um, Institute, um, to, he to, help to help them interpret um, network and pathway relationships. And I think that it has also shown um, pinpointing some uh, specific gene names successfully. Uh, Right, no, so let's go to our third tool, which is uh, called PDN or Pathway Drug Network, and goes one step further from pathways to drugs. So what it does is it uses a very similar to PCXN methodology to actually construct the same type of networks uh, with small differences, but then it enriches those networks and makes them bigger uh, as it uses uh, drug and disease gen gene signatures. Then with uh, uh, like a complex uh, algorithm, which I don't really understand, uh, goes uh, from the previous networks to this type of networks, uh, where you can see um, two types of nodes, pathways, the green ones, or drugs, the blue ones. Um, and of course, you can see the edges, which denote either positive or negative correlation, and have a specific weight. So let's, see, let's say you have uh, an example like that, where uh, you can see three pathways being um, affected by three specific drugs, and if these drugs belong to the, to like a, uh, uh, in the context of a specific disease, then you have like some useful in information there. So based on relationships like that, uh, PDN tries to utilize, those, to utilize those to aim for pathprints that can be targeted based on the context of a disease, or uh, finally prioritize um, some drug targets based on that. But this is the, the very end result, like the most important that you can get. So PDN is largely under development now, so uh, it's still uh, so the paper is still being written, for example. Uh, but we have a prototype which uh, already has been used in the Harvard School of uh, Public Science, and it also has been compared uh, in that context with other uh, analyses like uh, C map, connectivity map analysis, uh, which is purely gene level, while ours is pathway level. And it has been shown that it's uh, substantially higher than. Uh, it shows a sub substantially higher rate of, uh, rate of positives than all the others, all, all around them, of course. Um, additionally, there, f there has been a few um, uh, direct testing in drug candidates uh, where uh, in the sepsis model that, uh, from the paper that I mentioned before, where five out of 10 compounds actually improve survival. So this is not something concrete, but it's a good sign for PDN. Um, Finally, uh, I would like to say that if, if you see this pipeline or workflow or uh, sum of tools as a, as a whole, you can say that this is a standardized approach to actually represent comparative functional uh, systems biology. And this is a very nice uh, overview of things. Uh, it also, as every 
piece of software should do. It addresses modularity as each of those modules uh, can work on its own and it uh, and along the way it produces different data that can be used by different people in different type of uh, studies. Now, um, uh, no matter if you use this as a whole system or uh, its tool on its own or its module on its own, you, ca you can get new insights into the system level interpretation of uh, gene set activity or correlation between gene sets and most importantly, yeah, do this in a systematic way. Uh, this is what we actually go for. The systematic way is the most important part here. Uh, as I mentioned, some parts of it, and not only PDN, are under, under development. And although there are uh, already plans and <coughs> um, suggestions there, we're open uh, to whatever you, you have to suggest to uh, uh, expand, expand on and enrich our tools using other new data, like RNA-seq, which we intend to do uh, shortly. It's actually the first thing to do, uh, or some other type of functionality that we can add to that pipeline. Uh, I will end with uh, thanking uh, the whole lab for, the, for this work and uh, you for listening to my presentation. Okay, um, so uh, questions? I guess I was very good. <laughs>